I'll try and sweep up the questions that weren't uh, addressed. Um, so just in relation to leadership around Paris, and maybe the most surprising thing for me was was the, was the leadership that, that China showed in securing the agreement, and, and many people have credited China with really making it happen at the 11th hour. Um, what I've been saying to people when I've been giving public talks since I came back from Paris is that we're in this unique situation that we are now a transition generation. So in the same way that that um, we've witnessed the transition from paper to the internet, um, we are now witnessing a transition, a part of a transition from our fossil fuel driven industrial revolution past to a completely renewable energy uh, society. And, and that's an opportunity for leadership from all of us, from our governments, but also from from communities and everything. Um, so I see leadership happening at a, a number of levels, and I do see it, as Deputy Crow said, as a, as a big election issue. I know that uh, Eamon Ryan has proposed potentially a debate specifically on this issue to, to show leadership uh, around it. Um, with respect to how to meet the targets, they do seem highly ambitious um, and maybe in some ways impossible, but we're making a lot of strides in energy, as I explained before, um, and community ownership is part of that, I and mean, we know that with respect to bioenergy, uh, the best use of bioenergy is locally owned uh, combined heat and power plants. And places like Clock Jordan have demonstrated that they can buy wood chip from a local farmer, keep the money in their economy, uh, and, and keep the system closed so they're not dependent on foreign imports. So there are opportunities we can build on and we can grow uh, and expand out. Um, there's opportunities around creative financing through credit unions where maybe communities could come together and invest in solar panels and whatnot. Um, I didn't talk about transport uh, because transport really hasn't addressed uh, greenhouse gas emission reductions. They've been very focused on reducing congestion. But if you look at something like the, the Grand Canal cycle path, which was National Transport Authority led, um, it's, it's really an example of best practice and where we should be going with, with cycling uh, in this country and getting people out of their cars and onto safe cycle paths. And we can also look at places like Sweden where they're replacing their entire bus fleet with, with biofuels from ethanol and we can look at replacing our own bus fleet. I know that uh, Jerry Murphy from Cork has done a lot of research on how Ireland could replace uh, their bus fleet with with buses powered by things like livestock waste in or livestock waste from slaughterhouses um, and whatnot. So we we have opportunities to look at examples of that. And I think that with respect to agriculture, it's it's much harder to reduce emissions uh, from agriculture. But we can look at the flooding and see that you know just being narrowly focused on one type of industry, be it beef or dairy, is actually putting farmers at risk with. Respect respect to future climate. It's going to get harder for them to do those kind of things. So we need to look at diversifying to protect us from those risks. Um, Agroforestry is one opportunity where they can actually plant trees but continue to farm in other ways in between those trees. And encouraging uh, farmers to actually start contributing to the renewable energy market through solar schemes, biomass schemes, and whatnot. It's an opportunity for farmers to diversify their income source. Um, there's a fantastic study called the Green Plan uh, by Professor Conley in Denmark that actually shows that we could completely decarbonize our society by 2050 and create 100,000 new jobs in this country as a result. So there are a number of co-benefits to making that transition too. Um, I'll address Deputy O'Sullivan's comments regarding animal and plant uptake I'll put my, or impacts. I'll put my scientist hat on for a minute and just say there... Because Sorry. there's a vote in the doll as well. So oh, excuse keep, me. Keep okay. talking. Basically, there will be winners and losers uh, with respect to impacts. So, so we can expect to see an overall species loss as the planet warms, but uh, some species will do better than others. So potentially more jellyfish in the sea, but less cod and whatnot. Um, and I'll end it at that. Just to keep oh, yeah, it short. Okay. But thanks for your attention. Deputy Smith, you want to make a brief intermission?